We haven't had the privilege of meeting just yet. My name is Daniel Groves, and I have the incredible honor of serving here as the teaching pastor here at Hope City. Pastor Jeremy and Miss Jen are actually uh, with our friends, uh, Mitch and Brandy Rose, over in San Antonio, celebrating their five-year anniversary at City Hills Church. So can we honor our pastors, actually? Can we honor pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster? Come on, for leading so strong. So uh, for those of you who've never been in a service before uh, with me, um, you know, Pastor Jeremy will be back next week. <laughs> Amen. And for those of you, this is not a one-piece khaki outfit. I uh, just, just need to clear up a few things before we get started. So you're like, it seems like a onesie, like the zipper's hidden under the arm. Okay. Um, anyways, I had a wild week. We had a fun week. Uh, my, uh, my kids' school, they came to me and they were like, Mr. Groves. And I'm like, do I owe you money? Uh, because you start with Mr. Groves, I know you need some from him. And they're like, can you, would you be open to being a chaperone on the seventh grade camping field trip? Y'all, I'm not really the camping. I know, I know some of you were shocked by this because of my premium beard, but I don't, I don't rough it in the camping world. Like, I'm a little bit more of a glamper. Like, I need a camper and air conditioning and Wi-Fi and all that good stuff. So, so I set up my, my, my tent with like a cot and down feather comfort. I mean, it was nice. It, I was not roughing it. But I went out there and it was wild. You know, we're sleeping like very little and, and we're eating sticks and stuff like that. And it was just crazy. So then on Friday, they were like, we're gonna go uh, play paintball. And I was already, like I was already having conversations with these kids to try to figure out who was gonna be on my team. And there was one girl there, her dad was a former Marine Special Forces. I'm like, she's on my team. Like, she knew. She had my six. She was like a black ops. Like, she was incredible. And so we set everything up, and y'all, these kids went all out. I mean, they were just, I was like, we're going to take it easy on them. They've never done this before. Y'all, they were, I have 31 of these welts, like, all over. Like, can you see this? I don't have guns like Pastor Jeremy. I was born without muscle mass. Uh, but they, they, I have 31 of these. And I was like, guys, you're shooting me, like, nonstop. And this one kid's like, we thought you were Sasquatch. I said, what? And he's like, you kind of look like Bigfoot. And this other kid's like, Bigfoot doesn't exist. And this kid goes, today I believe. I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So that was my week. But y'all are going to hang out with me here for week number four. It's our final week of Rhythms. How many of you guys have enjoyed this series? I think it's been incredible. So week number one, Pastor Jeremy talked about the rhythm of restoration. Week two, I unpacked the rhythm of rest. Last week, Pastor Jeremy talked about the rhythm of relationships. And this week, if you're taking out notes, if you've been in services with me before, you know I'm big on taking notes because if you're a hearer only, you only retain 5% of what you hear. If you take down notes in real time, it goes to 35%. Take down notes and apply them and go back and reapply them. Actually goes to 90 to 95%. If you're taking down notes, this weekend's sermon is titled The Rhythm of Worship. Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. I got one amen. Because you know, that's perfect. I'll tell you why that's perfect. Because most people are like, ooh, so I don't, I don't, I don't sing that great. <laughs> I don't have great rhythm, white people. You know, I don't, <laughs> like, like I, I don't know how that really fits me. Like, I'll never have the opportunity to sing like Ariana Grande Alvarez up here. And, and who's just like, and sometimes we catch ourselves just watching worship and almost being a spectator. The reality is if you come in as a spectator and you just kind of go through the motions of worship, then this is no more than a karaoke Sunday. But when you position yourself and you align yourself with expectation, you can walk out better than when you came in. So this weekend, we're gonna be talking about the rhythm of worship, the definition of rhythm. We've been talking about this all four weeks. Is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. The definition of worship is to regard with great or extravagant respect honor or devotion. Let's pray before we dive in. God, I thank you today that you give us ears to hear you. We need a mind that's ready, that's sharpened to understand. And most importantly, God, we want a heart that's willing to receive all that you have. We did not walk in today to just play church. We're not tuning in today online to just play church. Cinco Ranch and Woodlands did not show up to just play church. So God, leave us marked by your presence today so we can walk out better, set free, and changed. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. All right, I wanna set everybody up to win this weekend. This is gonna be freeing for some. For others that know you got it, it then it's not gonna be that big of a deal. But for others, this is gonna be a really big deal. I want everybody to know this, that you're invited, all of us. Look at the person next to me and say, you're invited. Yeah. Man, it's really nice getting the invite, right? But when you find out something's happened later, you're like, what was that party? And you're like, nothing. You weren't, you weren't invited. <laughs> like, no, we're all invited to this. We're all invited into the presence 
of the living God. The Bible says in John chapter four, verse 23, red letters, Jesus speaks these words. He said, but the hour is coming. He spoke these words and is now here. Jesus has the ability to say something's coming and it's right now. Like what an incredible declaration. When the true worshipers, 90 crowd participation, we're an interactive church. So across all locations, even at home, next to your kitty cat, I want you to wave at me if you're a true worshiper. Come on, where's all the true worshipers at? Okay, cool. Some of you are lifting your hand because you don't want to be left out. You're like, I don't even know what it means. I'm gonna unpack it. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Paul's to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, and this is gonna be freeing to someone, has nothing to do with your ability to sing on key. That's great news. So we're up here singing, Ah, God reigns. And some of y'all are like, Ah, God reigns. Like creating your own melodies. <laughs> y'all don't know, we can hear you, we can hear you. Some of you, like we start the beat and you're like, oh no, please, why does the drums have to come in? I'm gonna look super transparent white right now. I'm not even gonna be able to clap on beat. It's okay. It has nothing to do with your ability to sing on key or clap on beat. To worship the Lord in spirit and in truth has nothing to do with your abilities, your strengths, your gifts. No, no, no. To worship the Lord in spirit and in truth is a pure, I need you to hear this, innocent, authentic expression of your faith and your trust in God. And this is the proof of this, and I love this. This is, everybody's invited to this because the Father loves your worship, and it's, it proves it right here. Put the verse back up. For the Father is seeking, he loves your worship. Those who will take off masks who will relinquish control, who will lift their hands before him and say, because see, a lot of you approach God's presence with the way you want him to see you. And he's like, hey, I can't bless, heal, fix, or restore who you pretend to be. I want, I want all of you, all the authentic you, the one I shaped and molded you. So when you worship me, do it in spirit and in truth. Don't come with this polished, filtered, selfie, goals sort of approach, but come to me in a position Transparency, come to me in a posture of surrender. And those are, come on, say my life. Those are the worshipers, your life that the Father seeks. He loves your worship. Because here's the reality we were all designed and created to worship God. Your life is like an instrument. You realize that? Now, it might be like super wonky, it might be like a, a wonky instrument, but you're an instrument. Amen. No, He loves your worship. Again, off key, on key, he loves your worship. You were designed and created to worship. The Bible says in Revelation chapter four, verse 11, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and all power. For you created all things. That's me. Come on, say, that's me. And by your will, they existed and were created. Here's the reality. Everyone, no matter who you are, worships something or even someone. That's why we're on a mission of, as a church to introduce you to the living and the true God. That's why we want you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and ultimately make a difference. That's why we want you to align your life under the mighty hand of God. Position your heart, syncopate your life to the rhythm of worship so that you can live out your best life and not be consumed by all this other noise and distractions because here's the reality, not everybody worships the true and living God. Some people idolize and worship people, worship sports heroes, actors and musicians. Some people worship themselves. Eee, don't look around. <laughs> Some people worship possessions. Everyone worships someone or even something. Again, let's look at the definition of worship. The definition of worship is to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. Every person everywhere worships something because worship is the fundamental drive of life. God created us with the drive, with the sense that there's something more to life than just experiencing life here on earth. The Bible actually says in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11, that God has actually placed, I need you to hear this, eternity in the hearts of men. He's placed eternity in our hearts, and this simply means this, that there's a recognition and a sense that there's something more than just the here and now. In reality, our ultimate purpose in life is not just to gain success, that's great, but it's not about fame and even happiness. Our ultimate purpose in life is to, I need you to grab this, to know the God who made us. And when you know the God who made you, this whole thing isn't about religion. You'll recognize that this is about relationship. That's why we're so passionate about relationships here. That's why we keep challenging people, don't do life alone, because our God himself is about relationship. You realize he looks down upon you and will meet you where you're at? 
Like, if you need courage, he'll meet you where you're at, like a daddy to a daughter. If you need faith and confidence, he'll meet you where you're at, like a son, a father to a son. He'll meet you where you're at. It's not just this blanket statement, love. I've got four kids. I individually have to meet them where they're at. Because the way I approach Brecken is different than the way I approach my two-year-old Fox. It's different how I handle my daughter Daphne versus my daughter Finley. God approaches us differently because it's all about relationship. But until we understand and enter into this type of relationship, we will always fall short of what is possible and attainable to us. And as his sons and his daughters, you have access to his presence. You have access to his presence, and that's really great news. You, you, you have this confidence and a knowing of who you are and whose you are when we were out of this camp. Uh, other kids, like literally, all throughout the camp, they're like, hey, Mr. Gross, can you spot me $5? I was like, I don't know you. <laughs> and my son, Brecken, would come over and be like, hey, Dad, can you give me $5? I was like, what's up, bud? I'm going to sneak it to you because I don't want all these other kids. Brecken has a different approach to me. There's a different level of confidence that he can come to me with. Why? Because I'm his dad. He belongs to me. That's my boy. He's way more handsome than me. That's my boy. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, this is the confidence. I love this verse. I preach this verse. This is a whole sermon. It could be preached around this verse. This is the confidence that we have when approaching God. That anything we ask according to his will, he hears us. I love this verse because it makes me want to lean into his presence and ask according to his will to know him more. To approach his presence and say, God, I want you to know, I I want to know your heart towards me more. But there's a confidence. Because when you have a confidence, you walk in with your blemishes and wounds. You walk in with your struggles and your concerns. You walk in with that stress and that heaviness. And the Bible says in Isaiah 61, 3, to take off that heaviness, to take off those burdens and replace it with a garment of praise. See, there's a different level of confidence when you approach the presence of God and know that he is a good, good father. Somebody say amen. Amen. So again, we're all created to worship. I love this passage in Psalms 100, verse one through five. It says, shout for joy all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. Literally shaped and molded you into his image. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Approach his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. I love this part right here. His faithfulness continues through all generations. It fires me up. Honestly, the closer I get to his presence and the more I recognize the importance of this relationship with him, the more I start wondering, and I'm gonna ask you to ask yourself this question, where's your adoration? Where's your adoration? What are you putting your heart and your attention and your focus into? I love my wife and my kids. I love our church. I love this assignment that God has us on, but none of it should replace the love and adoration I have for my my Savior To really lock into the rhythm of worship, I want you to take down notes, write this down. We have to, it'll be on the screens, we have to redirect our adoration. Now some of y'all are like, that's a big word. You could have just said adore or something else. You could have said devotion, no, no, no. The definition of adoration is to express deep love and respect. If you've been around me for any amount of time, you know that I tell a lot of stories about my beautiful wife, my my girl Kim Possible over here. How many of y'all, where's all the ladies at? How many of y'all enjoyed ladies night, come on. Man, she crushed it, Pastor Jen and you. That was an amazing night. Best is yet to come with that. But if you've been in any services with me, you know that I tell a lot of stories about our relationship. I preach a lot about her. You know that I refer a lot to my wife. And the truth is, I absolutely adore her. 17 years married, four kids, 21 years best buddies. Like, she's my greatest gift on this planet. But even being my greatest gift on this planet, if I talk about her more than I do Jesus... If I rely and depend on her more than I do Jesus, if I end up holding on to all my adoration instead of giving it or redirecting it to the Lord, I give it all to her, then my life will become unbalanced and I won't experience the rhythm of worship, the rhythm of relationship that I'm supposed to have with God. I'll never live to the, to the level of the assignment that God has called me to because my life will be out of sync. We talked about it in week number two 
how, how a, a runner ends up finding their stride because if they're striving the whole time, then they do it in their own strength and they wear themselves out. Because here's the reality, it's him that gives me the breath to love her. It was him that gives me the breath to love my kids. I woke up again today and I'm breathing, which is proof that God's not done with me yet. It's a miracle I'm even breathing. It's a miracle I even made it, born into the mess that I was born into. Almost aborted twice. Where's all my never should have made it at? Come on. It's a miracle. And every morning when I wake up and I recognize that this breath is from him, the moment that I posture myself to worship him, I need you to hear this. When I worship the Lord and it's vertical, I'm simply giving him his breath back. When we worship him, the breath belongs to him and it comes from him. Job chapter 33 verse four says, for the spirit of God has made me. Man, I, these verses just bless me. And if they don't bless you, I need you to get in the word more. A pastor friend of mine said this, this is gonna feel a little blasphemous, but I'm gonna say it. And if you're mad at me, you can email me at hurtcameron.net or somewhere. Just. He said, you know, sometimes when you read the Bible, but you have to do it every day, so sometimes it kind of feels like the jack in the box. I'm like, oh boy, just a little, okay, sir, I don't know where you're going with this. And he goes, you know, it's like I open the Bible and turn the page and it's really good reading. It's cheesy, but you're gonna remember this. But all of a sudden, one day, pop revelation, just pops right off the page. So you're reading the Bible and I read this verse and it just popped off the page and I was like, whoa, whoa, for the spirit of God has made me. Man, thank you, God, for shaping me, for choosing me so that I can declare the night and day difference you've made in me from rejected to accepted, from nothing to something you shaped and molded me. You chose me. You knew from the moment of conception, the plan, the purpose and assignment on my life. You knew the hairs on my head and then when you would take them away to keep me humble. You knew all, you knew all of that, God. The Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the almighty God, watch this, gives me life. We must consistently redirect our praise and our devotion back to God, knowing he is the only one worthy of our devotion and adoration. Nothing else, I need you to hear this, nothing else is worthy of placing your praise in. And this redirection, it's a daily discipline. Every day we have to apply spiritual daily disciplines. You're gonna hear this a lot at Hope City. Every day we challenge you, do the first 15. Five minutes in worship, five minutes of prayer, five minutes in the word. I added another one. On week number two of Rhythm of Rest, I, I talked about how there's a fourth spiritual discipline that we're missing, and that's just the discipline of simply remembering. Because when you are where you're at and you're at this rock in a hard spot and the enemy's like, this is the thing that's gonna destroy you. This is the thing that's gonna take you out. It's robbing you of your joy. It's muting your worship. By simply remembering all that God has done for you, you can say, hey devil, I know you're trying to mess with me now, but look at what all God has done in the past. And if he showed up before, I know he's gonna show up again. So these spiritual disciplines, we have to apply every day because if you aim at nothing, you hit nothing. It's true. Every day when you position yourself in a position under the mighty hand of God, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God will begin to download everything you need when you need it. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Another loaded question I wanna ask for all our locations watching online. Do y'all know that you carry a sound? Everybody carries a sound. Like, like I'm a musician, I started in music. Sound guys know this, this room has a key. So they, they tune out and EQ the frequencies of the instruments and the mics and y'all, maybe you don't know this, but like when we're singing uh, and, and Myra and, and the team are up here and Kim and Kat, we're all up here singing. When, when they're singing, they tune out and they tie out and they, they, they kind of remove some of those frequencies that are in the room so the mics don't go. Ooh. Because if that was happening all the time, it would be super distracting, right? You know that your life carries a sound? For some, it's joy. Like, you know, you walk in and be like, I love that. I just love to be around her. Like, she has so much joy. For some of you, it's hope and peace and courage and bravery. For some of you, it's boldness. And some of you, it's freedom. You shout from the rooftops all, that's, all that God has done. But for some of you, the, the sound you carry is insecurity. For some of you, that sound looks like anxiety. For some of you, you wake up and that sound feels like depression or your past. Some of you, you wake up and you just kind of go through the motions, and I've talked about this before, you're either sinking, surviving, or thriving. For some of you, your sound sounds like sinking. 
I just don't know how I'm gonna get through another day. Look at the person next to you and say, you have a sound. The Bible says this though, and I love this, Psalms chapter 40, verse three. This is gonna be freeing to somebody. He put, who did? God. He put a new song in my mouth. In the margin of your Bible or your notes, you can write, he put a new sound in my mouth. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. If you're taking down notes, write this down. Number two, we have to tune our sound to his song. And again, I don't care if you can't sing on key. I I don't care if you have no rhythm. When you turn that worry and that fear towards him and allow him to replace it with his song, I know somebody needs to hear this. No matter what you're going through, God specializes in the again. And maybe your sound feels messy, and maybe your sound feels like heartbreak, but you're gonna get your joy again. Some of you are gonna get your boldness again. Some of you are gonna laugh again. Some of you are gonna start to live again because God specializes in the again. And when you turn your and tune your sound to his song, it begins to overflow into every area of your life. You'll wake up and realize, I can do this. I can fight. I've got boldness and bravery because it's not just me standing, but I'm confident in the one who's standing with me. And then you get this boldness, and you've heard me say this before, where you'll start looking in the mirror and say, hey, hey after I put on my whole armor, my Ephesians 6, 10, verse 17 armor, the, the, the whole armor, I put it all on. I look in the mirror and say, hey, devil, you're gonna get tired before I do because the one who's standing with me will always be bigger than the one that's standing against me. When I tune my sound, my strength into his song, everything begins to change. I, uh, I love this old song. Some of y'all will know it. Some of you will have no idea. And if you have no idea, then I wrote it. Uh, <laughs> Psalms 107 verse two says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. See, I tell everybody my story. I can't help but tell people that I went from nothing to something. I can't help but tell people about how my family was bound by addiction and struggles and strongholds, and I never should have made it, but I woke up again, and I'm standing on the rock of my salvation, and the redeemed of the Lord threw me. I gotta say something. I got Some of y'all are like, whew, coming in hot. Like, you've got so much passion and so much energy, and I wanna encourage you, don't judge someone's passion until you know their past. Don't judge someone's worship and how they worship, because you don't know what they've been delivered from. But there's this old song, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. White people stop clapping. Let the redeemed (laughs) of the Lord say so. Say so. I say so. Come on, everybody who's not white, help me. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on. Now everybody can sing. Come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, a Cinco at Woodlands at home. One more time, even louder. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. That's pretty good. Give yourself a hand. Come on, that was good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed me from the hand of my adversary. I believe every day when you begin to redirect your sound to the song of the Lord, everything begins to change. I remember I was asked, this is a, I almost didn't tell this story, but I felt like I, I needed, <laughs> needed to. Uh, I remember I was asked by my, my, my friend who, his dad had an amazing church, and he was like, hey, uh, my dad would like for you, he heard that you sung right. And I was like, oh, a little bit. And he was like, is it good? I was like, Psh, <laughs> is it good? <laughs> His songs will go around the nations. Like, it's gonna be incredible. And it was terrible. It was awful. Like, it wasn't that great. But anyways, I was like, okay, but it was, I was new. I had just started playing guitar. He's like, man, just come do this Friday night. It'll be amazing. So I asked my friend, I was like, hey, can you like kind of do some rhythmic percussive sound? He's like, yeah, I got you. I was like, cool, okay, cool, cool. So we practiced a little bit. I felt pretty good. And then I forgot a really important piece. Uh, I, I just really just forgot about the Lord and the whole thing. And, and I was more concerned about my shoes. I was more concerned about my look. I was more concerned about pledging up my guitar and making sure it was shiny. Like it was the lady in the front row was like, I don't know what's happening. I can't see. Like, and, and I, I got plugged in and the sound guy's like, do you need a mic check? I'm like, do you need a mic check? He's like, I don't, need, I don't know what that means. Like, why? He, like I was just super arrogant about it because I was really relying on my own strength because I had it, right? How, how many of y'all know those people? He's like, Psh, I got it. So I sat down and I did not have it. And I begin to train wreck. I forgot all the lyrics. 
to the song I wrote. And this is not like a freestyle Eminem, like hip hop battle. Like this is quiet and everybody's like, what's he gonna do? And I was like, why don't you guys just sing something to the Lord? And I was listening for lyrics. Like I was like, what did she say? And I, I train wrecked for about three minutes. Like it was so bad. It was like Nickelback, except worse. Like it was, <laughs> it was really bad. And I'm literally train wrecking. And I get done, and for, for those of you who don't know, our sound team is absolutely phenomenal. And the only time that you notice them is when something goes wrong because they're doing so much behind the scenes to make it so right. Give them a hand, they're incredible. <laughs> On all of our locations, phenomenal. What you don't know is they mute and unmute all the time to make sure that things don't feed back. And if you unplug a cable from an, an acoustic guitar, it makes a clank, clank noise. Like Baptist guy in the back that just woke up. He was like, it's not Pastor Jeremy, I'm sleeping this one off. Like, <laughs> so when you unplug the guitar, it's super loud. I literally stand to my feet. I've just train wrecked. I unplug the guitar, it's super loud. And everybody's just staring at me and I'm like, there's this one guy, I can still picture him today. Like I tried to find him afterwards because I wanted to fight him in the parking lot. He was off to the side and he goes, huh, wow. <laughs> and then he does the patented, trademark, copywritten slow clap. <laughs> yeah, come on everybody, let's go. And I was like, oh, and I walked off the stage and I'm putting my guitar in the case. And even my own mom, who's like my greatest fan and champion other than my wife, said, <sighs> and I said, it was it that bad? She's like, it's okay, let's go get a snack. Let's just go, <laughs> looking like your blood sugar's dropping. True story, I was putting my guitar away. True story, I felt the voice of God reverberate in my spirit. You know, you could have included me. And I feel like that echoes throughout so many areas of our lives. How much of the time are we doing it in our own strength? And he's saying, you could have included me. How, how many times do we just go through the motions and sing songs and he's like, hey, do you, you wanna invite me? Because we've made it about us. We have to turn and tune our sound into his song. I want you also to recognize this weekend that your praise is a weapon. When you walk out of here today, Earlier I read, shout for joy all the earth. The joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8.10, is literally your strength. God is giving us VIP access. He's like, shout for your strength. Shout for your marriage. Shout for your future marriage. Shout for your freedom. Shout for that hope that you need. Shout for that peace. Shout for that perseverance and that fight and that courage. Somebody just, just shout right now. Some of y'all are just, that's good. Just one shout of praise away. The Bible says in Psalms 150 verse six, let everything, that's us, that has breath, praise the Lord. And then it says it again, praise the Lord. But it's a choice. It's a choice to rely on your own strength and put a Band-Aid where there needs to be stitches from the great physician. You can rely on your own strength and just survive life and go through the motions and end up in cruise control and 20 years goes by and you're like, how did I end up here again? The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 6, to humble yourself, therefore under God's mighty hand, and he will lift you up in due time. I believe that due time is this weekend. Some of you have walked in these doors, you've walked into all of our locations, you're watching online, and you've had that posture, I talked about it a moment ago, as a spectator instead of expectation. And we've all agreed and we've seen that we're invited to worship, this all belongs to us. But again, outside of his presence, it's in our own strength, but when you align yourself in the rhythm of worship, I'm about to shut myself down. The atmosphere begins to change in your life. Breakthroughs begin to break out in your life. Miracles, when you begin to align yourself in the rhythm of worship, miracles will become your lifestyle. So areas you're praying for, things you're believing God for, contending for, fasting and staying. How many of y'all jumped into the 21 days of prayer like you were a part of what we were doing? Continue it on. Let it continue to be a rhythm of prayer and a rhythm of relationship and a rhythm of worship because as you do that, you'll begin to walk out the promises of God. And again, you'll recognize that your praise is a weapon. First Peter 5, 6, though, says, humble yourself, again, under the mighty hand of God. How many of y'all believe this weekend is that due time? How many of y'all believe that a diagnosis can reverse this weekend? 
Now, I want to hear somebody believe it. How many of y'all believe that a diagnosis can shift? How many of y'all believe that the name of Jesus is still bigger than the name of COVID and respiratory issues and diabetes and diseases and cancer? That the name of Jesus will always be bigger than broken hearts, broken marriages, mental instability, and emotional distress. And I'm telling you, I love what Pastor Jeremy's mom says. She said, listen, he's just one mention of his name away from being right there. Tune your sound to his song. And if the only name you can whisper, if the only thing you can say, because you may be here and say, Daniel, I wouldn't even know what to sing. I wouldn't even know what to say. The only thing you can whisper is the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, it's enough. Come on, lift your hands all over right now. All of our locations online right now. Just, and just begin to say his name. You can whisper it. You don't have to shout it. But if you want to shout it, you can. Come on, that's okay. I'm telling you, he's just one mention of his name away from everything shifting and changing. God, I thank you that you're big enough and strong enough to heal, fix, and restore every situation. God, I pray that as we redirect our loneliness, we redirect our frustrations, we redirect the stress, concern, anxiety, fear, timidity, suicidal th thoughts, and depression, as we reroute and redirect that sound to your song and we call upon your name, God, I thank you for breakthrough. I thank you for areas that felt like they were falling apart to begin to fall into place. I thank you for miracles to break out in marriages and families. I thank you, God, that this week when they go in, the doctors will be baffled and say, we don't know what happened, but you no longer have to worry about this situation. Your scan was clear. God, I thank you that nothing is missing. I'm prophesying broken or incomplete. God, I pray today that miracles would break out in families. Prodigal children who have fallen away and got caught up in the prodigal life, that that praying mama, that prayers that availeth much, dad, that when they begin to stand and begin to believe God, I pray that they wouldn't stop fighting and believing because Exodus 14, 14, you are fighting for us. We tune our sound to your song and we thank you for deliverance. Come on, somebody shout. I felt God on that moment. So number three, last but not least, we have to tune our hearts to his heart. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. We have to tune our hearts to his heart. Because reality is when you tune your heart or connect your heart to someone else or something else or you tune your heart or turn your heart to the things of this world, you'll end up feeling empty and hopeless and depleted. But when you sync up to the heart of God, when you really sink up to his heart, you'll recognize with that aligning to his heart, there's mercy, there's forgiveness, there's freedom, joy, and peace. Pastor Jeremy last week talked about Psalms 23, 6, that everywhere you go and he navigates, goodness and mercy continues to follow after you. We have to tune our hearts to his heart. I'm gonna have my friend Jason. Jason, can you, uh, we talked before the service. I asked him, I said, man, I, you know, I played, play guitar, and I said, man, I'd love to, can you bring a guitar out? And plus, we're matching. We're like the khaki cousins. It's kind of, it's fall. I mean, you know what I mean? It's a brave color when you're wearing it in a onesie. It's from the back of the room. They think I'm a floating head in Jordan 6. But I remember when I first started playing, like, I just loved it. Whether it was around a campfire, at a moment to lead worship, I would just, I'd take the guitar and I'd just enjoy, I'd enjoy playing. And, and it was just another extension of, of my expression of worship. And from that first chord, like from the first chord that the team plays, when the countdown starts, how many of y'all can just feel the presence of God shift? And so from the first chord, I just, I love playing the guitar. And so, what's happening? Is this on? Is it? I don't, I don't know if it's on, Jason. Is it? There it is. This is beautiful. <laughs> so everybody here in all the other locations and online, I don't care if you have no musical abilities, you know that that doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound in, in tune. Jason, I'm gonna hand this back to you, and I would strongly appreciate you tuning the guitar. Give Jason a hand real quick for taking the moment. So watch this. So there are different things in our lives that can knock our life out of tune. If I take that same guitar and just leave it in the trunk, the weather patterns and the weather changes in Houston, the humidity one day, not the next day, m most days is on. 
But if I just leave it in the car or I drive up to Michigan, let's say, up north and I'm up in the Upper Peninsula area where it snows all the time and it's beautiful, which is terrible. Uh, sorry, Pastor Roland. <laughs> But if I take that same guitar and just leave it in the trunk, the, the cold weather conditions will mess with the, because conditions and atmospheres matter. The condition and atmosphere in your life will mess with your tune. That condition and that atmosphere of that toxic relationship or that condition, that atmosphere, that toxic thinking, that situation that you're in that you can't seem to break free from, your condition in that situation and that atmosphere can mess with your tune. Here's reality, it might be a person, and subconsciously you don't even realize that they're constantly knocking you out of tune with their negativity. On this seventh grade trip, I, I picked up a guitar, and I was about to lead worship in this setting, and I was all excited to lead, and, and uh, I said to all the kids, none of you touch this guitar. Pepper spray, I can't pepper spray them though, because they're not my, not my, not my kids, I can't pepper spray. So I was like, none of you touch this guitar. And they're like, no problem, Mr. Groves, we're good. And I was like, oh, I knew you were gonna touch it. And so I walk over to the side, and sure enough, this dude walks over, picks up the guitar, and starts playing it. When he puts it down, it slides down the wall, hits the ground, and goes out of, goes out of tune. I didn't even know it. Sometimes there's old wounds and old pasts and old hurts and old unforgiveness issues and old struggles that you're holding on to, and you're dragging it along like an ill-fitting jacket, and all along it's messing with and knocking your life out of tune. And I picked up the guitar and didn't know it, and the moment I picked it up and began to play it, it sounded just like I started here. And I remember thinking, what? Because the reality is there are situations that knock us out of tune, and what ends up happening is when you're not in tune with the heart of God, you're not in tune with his voice. You can't hear the voice of God when you're not syncopated and in tune with his heart. I'm gonna take the guitar back. Did, did you tune it? Jason, awesome, give, give Jason another hand, that was amazing, thank you. Okay. Okay, that's better, that's better. There's an old song that goes, I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it Cause it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to heart of worship, where it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for things I made, cause it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of the world. It's all about you. And it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. Because it's all about you. It's all about you.
Somebody give God praise today. God, today we'll redirect our adoration. We'll tune our sound to your song and we'll tune our hearts to your heart. With every eye closed, maybe you're here today and you say, Daniel, the truth is I needed this today, man. The truth is I've not experienced or walked in a rhythm of rest. The truth is I haven't been redirecting my adoration. There's so many other things that are stealing my attention. Maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I, I, I have been broken. The sound I've been carrying feel, feels hopeless. But today I'm gonna redirect and tune my sound to his song. And I'm going to align my heart to his heart. Jesus, today I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness. That the answer always begins with and ends with you. Forgive us, God, for ever making worship about us. We're sorry, Lord, for what we've made it. It's all about you. If you're here today at Cinco Woodlands, West Houston, watching online, you say, Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my savior, but I want to. Today's my day that I want to surrender everything. I want to live out a life that looks like a rhythm of worship to the one true God. Or maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, I got caught up in the prodigal life and I fell away, but today's the day I wanna rededicate my life. It's God's job to change you, but we wanna walk with you. Our hosts are gonna come out in a moment and give you a next step so that you can be discipled and walk out your next step in your journey with Jesus. But I'm gonna count to three and I want you with boldness. When I hit three, if you wanna give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life today, when I hit three, I want you to lift up your hand. One, Daniel, today's my day. Two. I wanna surrender and rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. Come on, hands are going up all over West Houston. Hand, 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 hand. I know they're going up at Cinco, at Woodlands. You can type in, our moderators will help you on our online campus, say yes to Jesus. I want everybody to pray this prayer today. Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me and it hasn't worked, but from today on, I choose to live for you. I lay every sin, every struggle, all my weaknesses at your feet, and I ask for forgiveness. From this moment on, I choose to live for you. You are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise today for all that he's done? Let's